Okay, in this video, we'll look at making complex data tables. And we'll still use the same principles we learned in making simple data tables. All the same principles still apply. But what makes complex data tables a little bit different is that oftentimes in a given set of data, there is repeated or common properties that we can simplify a little bit. <clears throat> I'll give you an example of that. Let's take a look at this set of data for um, air quality in Los Angeles. The the data quality is given to us for three locations, the beach, the mountains, and the valley. And at each of the locations, we're given several pieces of information. So one is the ozone level at 7 a.m., the ozone level at noon, and the ozone level at 5 p.m. So at three times during the course of the day, we have information on what the ozone level was like. And then secondly, we have airborne irritants, and there are two different types of airborne irritants. So the ozone level would get its own columns, each of the three, and the airborne irritants would each get their own column. There'll be two of those. But because there is a commonality, there is something that they share in common, we're going to simplify the table just a little bit in order to account for that and reduce the repetitiveness. Again, we're trying to be very concise. We want all the information to be there, but we don't need any extra information that's not necessary to be there. So just like I did in the simple uh, data tables, I'm going to make the sketch on the graph paper, but normally you would not do that. So the sketch should be on a piece of scratch paper. It could just be on the back of any random piece of paper where you sketch out what the shape of the headings at the top will look like. Once you feel like you've got a good plan, then you would go ahead and go to the, to the graph paper. So just to give you a sense of what it means to have a common property, if for example, Just generically, I'll give you sort of the idea behind how this table is going to work. So there is some common property, and then we may have some specific version. And so the way that it would look is something like this. So the common property applies to both of these. Typically, this is where the units will go. The units would go with the common property at the top and then the specific properties down here. So for example, we have the ozone levels and those are in units of parts per million. And then the specifics would be 7 a.m., noon, and then we'll have a third one that will say 5 p.m. So this is the idea behind the table. So let's go ahead and sketch out what it's going to look like for our set of data. So for our set of data, there are six pieces of information that need to make their way into the table. The location should be there, the ozone level at seven, at noon, and at 5 p.m., and the pollen count, as well as the mold count. So that's six different pieces of information that need to be in the data table. And so if you notice the ozone level shows up three times, and airborne irritants is going to have two columns underneath it. Whereas location is not a common property in the sense that it doesn't repeat throughout the data. It's not in any of these other uh, pieces of data on this line. So it'll only get one box. So on the left-hand side, we would start with location. And then we have three different times. So there is 7 a.m., noon, and 5 p.m. And the name of that common property is ozone level. That's in units called parts per million. Parts per million are, are basically like the same thing as a percent, but just for very, very small percentages. And then we have airborne irritants, and those two were called pollen and also mold. Now, since this is a pretty long word, I'm going to go ahead and give that two lines. And this particular one does not have any units. So we won't worry about the units. Okay, so the way that the boxes around the outside will look is something like this. And just to remind you, this is only a sketch. This isn't the final product. That's why I'm not using a ruler to make the borders. 
Okay, so this first box is pretty simple. It's just like the simple data table. But when we go to the more complex ones, we're going to want to split this box in half. And we'll split it again right here to keep the ozone level separate from the airborne irritants. And then we'll break these guys, the specific properties, up into boxes. Now these lines would continue down, and then our data would be, one. there would be three lines of data directly underneath it. Okay, so now that I have a good sketch of what it's going to look like, we'll go ahead and start making the actual table. I have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, columns. And so for this particular piece of graph paper, I'm going to go ahead and make the width of each column four. So that's going to be four times six or 24 blocks across. So I'll start by making a very, very faint dot, a dot that will disappear once I draw the line across. And now I'll count my way across to 24 squares. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4. Okay, <clears throat> and now that I have those dots in place, these two dots are now 24 squares apart from each other. We'll go ahead and connect the two. Okay, so that's the top line of our data table. Uh, I know that with the amount of information that I have, I'm going to allow this to be four blocks high, or that is to say that each of these will be two blocks and then two more blocks. Just make sure I have enough room for all the information. So that means that I need another line that's going to be four blocks below. So there's one, two, three, four. I don't need to count how far across to draw the line because I'm going to use the top line that I've already drawn as a guidance. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and draw the uh, lines underneath. I'm going to give my data two, two uh, boxes high or two grid lines high. So there's the first set of data. Second set of data. and third set of data. Okay, now, before I put too many of the lines in, I do know there will be end caps on the left and on the right, so let me go ahead and take care of those right now. We'll close off the outside of the data table. Okay, and the first column is actually is, is a simple data table, basically. So I don't really need to do anything special with it. I'm going to go ahead and, and close off the left side of the, of the table. And again, I said I was going to go four blocks across. One, two, three, four. So this is where the information about the location of each piece of data. Okay, now before I go too far, I want to make sure where this line, so this is the line that, that will actually cut all the way across the box on the headings. It's over here somewhere. And just to make sure, I have three data sets or three pieces of data that will go in uh, three columns. Each column is going to be four, so that means I do want to go 12 over before I draw that line. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So 12 is right there. And I'll go ahead and extend that line all the way to the bottom. So whenever we're making the data table, every time that I make a line, I extend the line all the way from the starting point to the end point. I don't have to go back and try to connect together or piece together two lines. It just makes it look unprofessional, like it wasn't planned ahead of time. So I know which ones are going to go all the way to the bottom. Now I can go ahead and separate this into two separate boxes to take care of my common properties and then the specific properties separately. Okay, now here's where you really want to be careful because the lines here don't extend all the way to the top. So they're going to be one, two, three, four, and then drop down from here, leaving this as one continuous box across the, the top. So one, 
and four more over, one, two, three, four. Again, not from the top, but drop down. So here's my boxes for 7 a.m., noon, and 5, a, 5 p.m. And then I want to do the same thing over here. One, two, three, four. I'm going to be very careful not to draw the line all the way to the, from the top, but from the second line from the top, and take that thing all the way to the bottom. Okay, so effectively all of the, the boxes have been put in place. Now I just need to neatly put in all of the information. So the information includes location, and again, I will do my best to center the word right in the middle of the box, both top to bottom and also left to right. On the box up here, this is the ozone level, and that is in parts per million. I know this is a pretty big word, so I'm going to go ahead and use both lines. Airborne irritants. In this box, we have 7 a.m., noon, and 5 p.m. Lastly, it's pollen and mold. Okay, so everything is in place now. Now is nothing left to do except to go ahead and put in all the information. So we have the beach, the mountains, and lastly, the valley. Okay, so I'll go across each line, just putting the information in. I'm just reading it directly off the table, but I'm going to leave this off the screen. So you can just write it in as I go across. So that was four. Now I don't write parts per million. I don't write parts per million here and I don't write parts per million in here. The parts per million that are written up here applies to everything that is under this block. So this is the distributive property, just like in the simple data tables, except that instead of applying to only a single column, this actually applies to all three columns that come underneath it. So parts per million applies to this column, to this column, and to this column. So that was four. 14 and 11 and for pollen that was 22 and for mold 489 at the mountain location it was two parts per million then six and five the pollen count was a little higher 48 and 792 for the mold count lastly is the valley Valley has the highest recordings for all of these. That's nine parts per million, 31, and lastly, 26. The pollen count was 76, and the mold count was 1380. <clears throat> okay, so we now have a very professionally made table. There are no lines dangling off. I didn't need to extend any of the lines. The boxes are all uniform in terms of their width. They're four across and two high. I have the complex aspect, which is the common property. There were two common properties, ozone levels and airborne irritants. And instead of having to put ozone level for 7, 7 a.m. in parts per million and ozone level at noon in parts per million and ozone level at 5 p.m. in parts per million, I only have to have the word ozone levels one time. The units are only there once. And this is just a way of simplifying the table in such a way that I don't have to be so repetitive. It looks much, much more professional. So hopefully this will help you in the future with organizing a little more complex data. Whenever you look at a set of data, you're always looking for common properties, things that are common to the, common to the set of data so that they won't have to be repeated and they'll get a much longer box across the top. But you really have to take your time to plan out that data table.